Republic of Mauritius, address to National Assembly of Honorable Xavier Luc Duval, GCSK, Vice Prime Minister, Minister for Social Integration and Economic Empowerment. Extracts of the speech delivered by Xavier Luc Duval in National Assembly on Tuesday 9 November 2010. Mr. Speaker Sir, first, let me congratulate yourself and the Deputy Speaker for your election. This debate gives me an opportunity to put in context some of the various actions and numerous initiatives that my ministry has taken over the past five months. Let me say that I am very sincerely thankful to the Prime Minister for having brought the fight against poverty firmly into the electoral agenda during the last election, indicating that we would, in fact, be creating a specific ministry for this purpose, and also for giving me the opportunity to head this ministry. I am very thankful for this and I accepted this ministry with pleasure. After five years in tourism, I have done a few things and it was getting a little bit like routine. I like challenges, and I took this challenge. Poverty is not about figures, Mr. Speaker Sir, it is about people, it is about seeing a smile on somebody's face. Even during my previous mandate as Minister of Tourism, we had, with my colleagues, started some work with money coming from the Tourism Fund. We have worked intensively in Rochebois, we have worked in a number of NHDCS and Maborg, Valley des Predators, Baye du Tombeau, Quaterborns itself, and everywhere, to try and better the lives of poor people. We worked especially with the squatters of Site Liqueur. Mr. Speaker Sir, we have a target group of people that we want to help, and it is roughly about 26,000 families that can be described as poor, 7,000 of which are in deep poverty very poor, with a family income of 5,000 rupees per family and the 16,000 other families who earn about 8,000 rupees or less and who are in relative poverty. I must say also at the outset, Mr. Speaker Sir, that poverty affects all the communities. There may be different percentages in each community, but everybody is affected. We have poverty in rural areas, we also have poverty in urban areas. Mr. Speaker Sir, we are having a census at the moment. We have finished the census, and we are just in putting the data. It will enable us to have an individual picture, family by family, of the situation as far as poverty is concerned, and then we will be able to apply the policy. Let me also say, Mr. Speaker Sir, that you cannot treat poverty in a vacuum. It is heavily reliant on the economic situation, because poverty is related to employment or business. At the moment, unemployment is fairly stable, around 7%. There are more women unemployed than men and that is something that we have to address. Mr. Speaker Sir, our approach has been all along to have an integrated approach to poverty alleviation, be it housing, infrastructure, jobs, training, caring for children, unemployment. I think this has been accepted nationwide, our very great need is to give priority to children children from three months to five years, and then turn to eight years, because, in fact, there is intergenerational poverty. Children born in poor families don't get the proper education, don't grow up well, and they also end up being poor and having poor children, and so on and so forth. So, Mr. Speaker Sir, in looking at children, we are today preparing Mautius of tomorrow. Mr. Speaker Sir, you cannot say that you are taking somebody out of poverty without giving him a job. If you don't give him a job then, as I mentioned earlier, you have not really done much, you have just sort of helping him on a day-to-day -day basis. Therefore, finding jobs for the poor, finding jobs for the unemployed is a major objective of our ministry. Last year we have probably trained and placed 1,800 people in various jobs and we pay 50% of their salaries and 60% of their training cost. Next year, we want to double that to, at least, reach 4,000 heads of families. Mr. Speaker Sir, there is a new project which I want to mention and this concerns a project called Single Quote SMS Jobs. What we want to do is to set up a special number at the NEF where you can send an SMS. We can be the goal between those seeking employment and those trying to find employees. Finally, Mr. Speaker Sir, there is this question of certificate of morality. It is regrettable that it takes so long to, firstly, obtain a certificate of morality and, secondly, that it has only a validity of about six months. Government is looking at all this, 
Mr. Speaker Sir, in order to get a certificate of morality quicker and, maybe, for the duration to be longer. Mr. Speaker Sir, we are talking about jobs. Some people will find it always difficult to get jobs. Dot, who is going to employ an ex-convict? Who is going to employ an ex-drug addict? It is very difficult. We are human beings and, given a choice, we may not employ these people. So, what do we do with these people? We have been talking to various people and we want to develop a kind of social entrepreneurship. With the Ministry of Environment, we want to encourage the production of paper bags. To replace the plastic bags, we'll have paper bags. It can be subsidized by some companies, but these paper bags, Mr. Speaker Sir, would then be made by these long-term vulnerable groups. Some of the other types of people who are long-term unemployed are the handicapped. It is sad sometimes that the handicapped suffer twice, once by being handicapped, if I may say so, and the second, by being poor and unemployed. I know that the Ministry of Social Security has undergone a publicity campaign to encourage handicapped people to register with them, because the law actually provides that everybody who employs more than 35 people must take, on its payroll, 3% of handicapped people but nobody respects that in Mauritius. We want to try, Mr. Speaker Sir, to enforce this and get handicapped people to work. In fact, what we say is employing a handicapped person is a blessing. To be continued. Please go on to part two of this speech.